The Florida Historical Society presents Florida Frontiers is made possible in part by the Jesse Ball DuPont Fund and by... The historic Rossiter House Museum and Gardens is in the O'Galley section of Melbourne, Florida. Preserved as it was in the early 20th century, historic tours of the Rossiter House include antiques, artifacts, and family heirlooms, and the 1865 Houston Family Cemetery. The last resident of the home was successful businesswoman and philanthropist Caroline P. Rossiter. The historic Rossiter House Museum and Gardens is available for weddings and other special events. The Department of State Division of Cultural Affairs, the Florida Council of Arts and Culture, and the State of Florida. Established in 1856, the Florida Historical Society is the oldest existing cultural organization in the state and the annual meeting has evolved over time. In 2020, the annual conference was divided into two separate events, the annual meeting and symposium held each October at the University of Central Florida and the Public History Forum held in a different Florida city each May. In the early years of the COVID pandemic, both conferences were presented as virtual or hybrid events. The first in-person Florida Historical Society Public History Forum was held in Gainesville in 2022 in conjunction with the 33rd annual Marjorie Kinnan Rawlings Society Conference. Welcome to Florida Frontiers presented by the Florida Historical Society. I'm Ben Broatmarkle. Marjorie Kinnan Rawlings was an active member of the Florida Historical Society she gave a presentation called Use of Florida Materials by Creative Writers at our 1938 annual meeting. The personally inscribed copies of her books, Golden Apples, South Moon Under, and The Yearling that she gave to the Florida Historical Society are archived here at our Library of Florida History in Cocoa. During the three-day conference in Gainesville, attendees enjoyed presentations and panel discussions on a wide range of topics, including Marge and Julia, the correspondence between Marjorie Kinnan Rawlings and Julia Scribner Bigham. Julia visited Marjorie in Cross Creek. They went hunting, they went fishing, and Julia just fell in love with it. And Marjorie, for her turn, found a young protege. Ditch of Dreams, the Cross Florida Barge Canal and the Struggle for Florida's Future, Oral History, Genealogy, and Researching Underrepresented Populations, Florida Literature, Historical Perspectives in Fiction and Nonfiction. Writing good history, and narrative history particularly, requires just as much creativity as a novelist. Public History, Historic Preservation, and Building for the Future, the Association to Preserve the Eatonville Community and the Zora Neale Hurston Festival of the Arts and Humanities, Stetson Kennedy, Living a Life of Purpose, and more. Student presentations from Florida History Day were also featured, and Florida's Emancipation Day was recognized on May 20th. Attendees visited Marjorie Kinnan Rawlings Historic State Park and toured the writer's home where she wrote classic books including The Yearling and Cross Creek. They visited the George A. Smathers Library Archive and were able to see historic documents relating to Marjorie Kinnan Rawlings, Zora Neale Hurston, Stetson Kennedy, and others. The exhibit Florida Impressions, Gift of Samuel H. and Roberta T. Vickers, was on display at the Harn Museum of Art. Displays at the Florida Museum of Natural History brought our rich cultural heritage to life. Attendees enjoyed a picnic lunch at the Matheson History Museum, home of the 1867 Matheson House. Welcome to uh, our first in-person conference in three years, the uh, 2022 Florida Historical Society Public History Forum and the 33rd Annual Marjorie Kinnan Rawlings Society Conference. It is very exciting to have everyone here. The Florida Historical Society was founded in 1856 in St. Augustine, but we really kind of came of age a uh, uh, century later here in Gainesville. Uh, it was in the 1950s and into the 1960s that 
the Florida Historical Society was headquartered here at the University of Florida. And a lot of the things that make us the organization that we are today happened here. You know, a, a lot of uh, familiar names like Rembert Patrick and uh, Samuel Proctor, names that are familiar to those even today who study Florida history, were part of the team that uh, brought the Florida Historical Society here to Gainesville. And even after the Florida Historical Society moved its headquarters to the University of South Florida, our academic journal, the Florida Historical Quarterly, remained here in Gainesville until 1995 when it went to uh, the University of Central Florida. But during that period, it really became a well-respected academic journal and the publication that you still enjoy today, of course. And it's in its 100th issue right now. So we're in volume 100 of the Florida Historical Quarterly. I'm happy to greet you and to welcome you here at the source. We like using water-based springs-based metaphors here at, in Gainesville because of all of the beautiful, amazing natural springs area, uh, in our area. And so I think of the source as a special word that since I am an archivist, I love that word and I like to, I like to serve um, sources to people as well. So um, it's very much fitting as a metaphor for um, for this conference. Um, I've been a member of the Florida Historical Society, of course, pretty much the same time frame that I was involved with the Rawlings Society. Um, and um, I've published a, an article or two in the, in the quarterly. I did one on Marjorie Rawlings a few years back. And um, I've attended a few of the conferences, not all, but, um, but I just wanted to tell you that like, about a, about a decade ago, I think, um, Ben and I were discussing this, the idea of doing a joint conference, um, and he brought it up on a, um, a cruise, on the, on the Florida Historical Society cruise to Nassau, Bahamas, um, and we have been discussing it ever since. And I thought, oh, that's a great idea. So um, somehow this conference doesn't seem quite as luxurious as a, um, a cruise, but Ben and I are both very passionate about opportunities to share ideas and Florida stories. And that's why all of us are here, right? On behalf of the board, of the Florida Historical Society, I am delighted to welcome you to what is our first in-person public forum, something many of us have been dreaming about for a very long time. And it's truly appropriate that we are having this together with the Rolling Society because not only does Florida have the longest, richest, and most diverse history of any state, we also have the oldest, richest, and most diverse literature of any state. After all, we have five Nobel laureates who have written about Florida in five languages, if you consider Bob Dylan's singing, <laughs> a separate language. Marjorie, or Marge, as our biographer Ann McCutcheon calls her affectionately, uh, Marge is really the soul of Florida literature. Um, her work embraces uh, the Florida writers who came before her, William Bartram, uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson, uh, Constance Fenner's Fenimore Wilson. Um, she came of age in this amazing stable of writers under Max Perkins and uh, with, with Ernest Hemingway and F. Scott Fitzgerald and Zora Neale Hurston late. Um, and, uh, and then within her circle um, ever since, gosh, uh, Florida writers write today, uh, uh, you know, un under the influence of Marjorie Kinnan Rawlings. I'm going to spend maybe the next half hour talking about 10 little known facts about Alachua County and Cross Creek. As a teacher, when I do a subject like this, I would like you from time to time to say, oh, I didn't know that. 
So we'll see if I can surprise you with some of the, the facts I have about this. And I want to begin and end by saying to Ben and the Florida Historical Society, thank you for having us Marjorie Canan Rawlings members join you on this weekend. It's such an honor for us to join such a distinguished group. The annual award ceremony held at the Florida Historical Society Public History Forum recognizes outstanding books in a variety of categories covering many different aspects of Florida history and culture. Awards are also presented for journal and newspaper articles and creative expressions of Florida history other than books. Outstanding service awards are presented, including the George Leland Speedy Harrell Award for Volunteer of the Year and the Caroline P. Rossiter Award for Outstanding Woman in Florida History. I know many of the women who have received this award. I have never written a book on Florida history. I have never administered a museum. I have never, uh, I've never uh, uncovered archaeological sites. I have never done any of the things that the women that have received this award have done. I am simply a community, act, community activist who has tried to protect our historic sites and to assure that they are accurately interpreted. It's been one of my goals throughout my lifetime to be sure that all the people of Florida are included in Florida's story. Also presented was the Michael V. Gannon Lifetime Achievement Award. Well, thank you. I, I first really want to thank Ben and everyone who's associated with the Florida Historical Society um, for everything that you do, all the projects you do, all the books that you publish, all the TV and radio programs you make uh, that promote Florida's history and make it accessible to people you know, every week of every year. Um, I think I've been associated with the society for maybe 30 years now, and I have to say it's always been a joy to be associated with it and to work um, with people in it. Um, and, uh, and so uh, for all of your work and for all of your dedication to that, um, uh, a big thank you on, on behalf of the people of Florida. Um, for the award, also a great honor to receive this award. Thank you very much. Um, it maybe has a little bit even more special meaning to me because it's named after Mike Gannon. And, and of course, I knew Mike for many years. He, 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 I, I, I was a graduate student under him. I worked on many initiatives and projects with him uh, in, in teaching. Um, and uh, in, his, in his final years, I you know, was lucky enough to be able to spend time at his home talking with him and, I, and, and uh, organizing his papers, and, and now I curate his papers. So I have a very close relationship, even still, with Mike. Um, so it, um, so it's, very, it's, it's, it, it's very dear to me and uh, very touching to me to have uh, the award that's, uh, that's named for him. Each morning of the Florida Historical Society 2022 Public History Forum and the 33rd Annual Marjorie Kinnan Rawlings Society Conference had presentations and panel discussions of interest to attendees from both organizations. Each afternoon, there were tours of historic sites, museums, and archives. The evenings featured performing arts presentations with a tie to Florida history and culture and guest speakers. I first heard about Marjorie Kinnan Rawlings from my fourth grade teacher at McNabb Elementary School in Pompano Beach, Florida. It was early spring, and Mrs. Chapman, a Florida native, decided it was a good time to share Rawlings' best-known novel, The Yearling, with 29-year-olds. Every day after lunch, for weeks, she read aloud a few pages, inviting the class to listen for the author's beautiful sentences and the backwoods Florida world they brought to life. All of us, northern transplants whose families had been lured to the state by the post-war boom, were entranced by the story, delivered during that delicious drowsiness following milk and sandwiches by an old-timer whose voice was as soft and suggestive as distant radio waves. 
The yearling was our first impression of old Florida, the people's speech and traditions. And Mrs. Chapman's reading seemed a private thing, a gift from her to us. We didn't know that the book, a coming-of-age story about a boy, his pet deer, and his parents, uh, who formed the North Central Florida Scrub, had been the best-selling novel of 1938, nor did we know the book had won the Pulitzer Prize and been translated into 29 languages, or that metro goldwyn mayer had made a popular film of it, starring Gregory Peck and Jane Wyman. All of this before we were born. By the time Mrs. Chapman read it to us, the yearling had come to be thought of as a children's book, because it centered on a young boy. It was a staple of the elementary school story hour. I loved the yearling as one loves a fairy tale or a dream. And Mrs. Chapman's reading became one of my fondest memories. Much later, I read the novel by myself, silently admiring it as magnificent storytelling, as literature. The novel's lyricism its fine rendering of country life, its use of local dialect, its structure and emotional range revealed Rawlings the artist, and I wanted to know how she, born in 1896, had become one. At the historic Hippodrome State Theater, conference attendees watched a screening of the new opera The Secret River, based on a short story by Marjorie Kinnan Rawlings, performed by Opera Orlando. There's opera being written all the time, and there's opera that can be written about our lives, our stories, because uh, that's what opera really is. It's our shared humanity. So Stella and I just got to talking about, hey, we should do a new opera. <laughs> you know, it was very ambitious for a young company to commission something, um, but I happened to also be friends with Mark Campbell, who's a Pulitzer Prize winning librettist, opera librettist. I teamed uh, Stella and Mark up. They were willing to work with each other. They, they really hit it off, and we said, we want to find a Florida story. And it was really Stella that found this story. So I'll let her share that part of it, if that's OK. Yeah, yeah. sure. Thank you, Gabe. Um, so yeah, we, uh, Mark and I were thinking about what story, and we were running it by Gabe and the team, and like, oh, it should be maybe Ponce de Leon or Disney or you know all kinds of whatever the Florida, space the coast. Space Coast, yeah. all kinds of things. And, um, just all weren't quite fitting right. And, and then uh, one day, a friend of mine, I was talking to her on the phone, and she said, oh, I just bought this book by Marjorie Canan Rawlings called The Secret River. It's a children's book. And, um, and maybe that would be interesting. So we went out, we bought the book, we all fell in love with it, uh, and said, this is it. This is going to be our, our new opera. And um, growing up in Gainesville, uh, I went to PK Young um, High School, or actually from kindergarten through high school. And uh, we went to the Rawlings um, home, homestead, um, all the time. I mean, it was kind of our field trip. <laughs> and uh, so I was familiar with, with Rawlings, of course, and, but I had never run across this book particularly. And, um, and so we just uh, we loved it. And Mark, Mark uh, said, I'm going to go ahead and start writing libretto. And he crafted a beautiful libretto. Um, I couldn't have asked for a better collaborator and, um, and a beautiful uh, writer and understood, understood the story, kept the simplicity, and yet there was a complexity underneath.
Florida had many clubs, bars, and other venues that were part of the so-called Chitlin Circuit that catered to African-American audiences during segregation in the early to mid-20th century. The South Street Casino in Orlando, the Ritz in Jacksonville, and the Cotton Club in Gainesville were all part of this tradition. At the conference, a performance by Little Jake and the Soul Searchers recognized this important history. Composer Sarah Nussel has written songs based on the poetry of Stetson Kennedy. Songs including Orange Lake Sings were performed at the Public History Forum by the Jackson family and friends. The 2022 Florida Historical Society Public History Forum and the 33rd annual Marjorie Kinnan Rawlings Society Conference culminated with a conversation between David Nolan, past president of the Rawlings Society, and Sally Baskin Hooker, niece of Marjorie Kinnan Rawlings and her husband, hotelier Norton Baskin. Sally Baskin Hooker was born in Florida in 1942, and from the ages of 3 to 18, she lived in the hotel at Marineland. It was through her uncle Norton Baskin that Sally Baskin Hooker met novelist and playwright Thornton Wilder, best known for his play Our Town. Well, this gentleman came down. My mother said his name is Thornton Wilder. How do you do? I'm I'm glad to meet you. <laughs> and every day when I got off the bus, I had an hour on the beach. And Mr. Wilder and I would walk the beach, we'd pick up shells, we talked. Um I still did not realize who he was. And probably about a week after he left Marineland, my teacher got up and she said, oh class, we have had the most wonderful thing happen here in St. Augustine. We've had a famous author staying at the Ponce de Hotel, Thornton Wilder. Well, guess whose hand went up? And she said, yes, Sally. I said. No, he's been staying at my house the last two weeks. Well, my house was the motel. Sally Baskin Hooker remembers visiting Marjorie Kinnan Rawlings at Cross Creek and getting sand spurs stuck to her clothing. She swapped stories with her Aunt Marjorie in the king-sized bed at the writer's home in Crescent Beach. Aunt Marjorie liked to entertain at at the Dolphin Restaurant. And once again, she would call my mother up And she'd say, can you clean Sally up? Which meant get me off the beach and out of a bathing suit. Well, Mama would put me in a cute little dress, and I would walk up to the restaurant. And I had been groomed in my southern manners. Yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, thank you, ma'am, please. I knew how to shake hands and curtsy. And so she would take me into the dining room. Well, one of them was this grizzly beard man. And I'm told it was Ernest Hemingway. Didn't mean a thing to me. Another time, there was a lady with a really funny hat on, Eleanor Roosevelt. The Florida Historical Society Public History Forum is held in a different Florida city each year. The event presented in conjunction with the 33rd annual Marjorie Kinnan Rawlings Society Conference took place May 19th through 21st, 2022 in Gainesville. You've been watching Florida Frontiers presented by the Florida Historical Society. Visit us anytime online at myfloridahistory.org. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ben Broatmarkle.
The Florida Historical Society presents Florida Frontiers is made possible in part by the Jesse Ball DuPont Fund and by... The historic Rossiter House Museum and Gardens is in the O'Galley section of Melbourne, Florida. Preserved as it was in the early 20th century, historic tours of the Rossiter House include antiques, artifacts, and family heirlooms, and the 1865 Houston Family Cemetery. The last resident of the home was successful businesswoman and philanthropist Caroline P. Rossiter. The historic Rossiter House Museum and Gardens is available for weddings and other special events. The Department of State Division of Cultural Affairs, the Florida Council of Arts and Culture, and the State of Florida.